Thank you. All right. Call to order the Monday, January 9th, 2017 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Happy New Year. Uh, we are being recorded by ACMI this evening. Uh, we initially had a longer agenda. However, that has changed um, due to procedural reasons. Public hearing first up on tonight's agenda will not be held. It's been postponed to February 6th. Uh, so everything is moved up accordingly beginning with 2017 annual town meeting warrant articles update. We're missing Jenny Rate tonight, so Laura Wiener is here in her place to lead us through that discussion. Okay. Um, there's, uh, I think we're planning to have a fuller discussion about this at the next meeting. This is sort of a, um, just to let people know what we're, what we're planning to do. So there were some um, articles that we discussed at the last meeting that were all weeks of last year's um, mixed use and parking. Uh, the, all new things that we passed last year that we have found this year needed a little bit of adjustment. And one had to do with um, allowing a little bit more density on, in the mixed use on the commercial quarters. Another one that we did not talk about last time was um, we had a definition of artisanal fabrication. And um, our new economic development quarter co coordinator Allison Carter, had, um, th the definition said no more than 5,000 square feet, and she did a little research and discovered that um, breweries are, by, by definition, larger than that. That would not, um, we would not be able to um, bring in a brewery with that limitation, and also even commercial kitchens are, um, that was small for a commercial, a commercial kitchen. So we are proposing removing the square foot um, Min uh, maximum entirely entirely but anything that comes in requires a special permit so we're not just allowing it completely mm -hmm. by right okay. um, and then the other things that are th being contemplated are coming through the residential study group the main one that's the only one that's zoning related has to do with um, driveway slope okay there are some other projects potentially being pushed forth by that group, but they have grown and uh, will likely become general bylaw changes. So we'll be under the purview of the Board of Selectmen. Um, that being said, the main proponent of the driveway bylaws is here with us tonight, Elizabeth Pyle. Come forward, even though I've introduced you, you tell sure. us who you are and run us through. And I, I think you have some of the materials that went to the residential study group last week. I have some Sorry. materials. Good evening, my name is Elizabeth Pyle. Hi, Hi. some of you I uh, know before, but some um, I think you're a new face. Um, I live in Arlington, I'm on the residential study group. I'm also a member of town meeting. I'm a lawyer, I'm a wetlands zoning land use lawyer. Um, before I lived in Arlington, I was on the Somerville Conservation Commission where I was the chair for 10 years. I'm happy to be involved with the residential study group. Um, I came to town meeting last year and I did assist with some of the citizen warrant articles and jumped in that way, but um, I am happy to be part of the study group and um, take the experience from last year and move it forward. Last year, if you remember, uh, there was a proposal to limit driveway slope to 15%. And I think there were um, uh, two problems with that Warren article last year. One was that there wasn't um, enough research behind where the 15% came from. And the second was that it focused on just a straight out limit of slope at 15% and didn't distinguish between upslope and downslope. And where Arlington is hilly, a lot of people were concerned that there, if there was any kind of regulation of a slope up, meaning from the street up to the house, that that would have a lot of unintended consequences for properties in the Heights. Uh, this year, our residential study group has been talking about limiting driveway slope, but only the downslope from, as measured from the house down to the property like in a garage under situation. And there's two reasons to do that. The first reason is a public safety reason. 
because when a car is backing up out of the driveway, its rear windshield is pointed at the sky and they can't see pedestrians or children walking by on the street. Um, and that's the, the main public safety issue. As another public safety issue though is that driveways that are too steep like that are um, too difficult for cars to get out of in the icy winter so people are not parking in the driveway uh, in the garage and backing up out of the icy driveway they're parking on the sidewalk apron um, and then pedestrians that are walking by have to can't get through because the car is blocking the sidewalk and they have to go out into the street and and walk into the street in the snow so that's a, another reason um, I did some research from surrounding communities and also um, on uh, guidelines for what an appropriate driveway slope should be and the certainly the, the consensus is that you don't want a driveway at any more than a 15% slope and I have a, a handout for you um, I think we have that. We'll do you have this change. I yeah. did add something new to it I found an additional uh, town which is Belmont that limits it and I also included that with the Arlington town engineer said as well, so I kind of improved it over what you had before, but it's basically the same information. So if you look, at, um, there's these are towns uh, that in many instances responded to an inquiry that Laura put out about do you regulate driveway slope, and then I also found some that didn't respond, like Belmont. Um, and then we have these uh, guidelines. The town engineering department said five to 15 percent would be appropriate. Um, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation basic driveway dimension guidelines at the bottom of the table says the maximum grade for residential driveways should be 10 percent to 15 percent. The National Highway Institute says even less, six to eight percent. Um, town engineering, five to 15. And then if you've read this memo, I, uh, I won't repeat it, but safe, efficient driveway design says that um, it's important to limit driveway slope. Um, the maximum practical change in grade is about 12%. Uh, be above that, many vehicles will scrape out. Um, but it's also safer to use a smaller grade rather than a bigger grade. Um, neighborhood street design guidelines from 2003 said that, says that um, driveway grades exceeding 15% should be avoided. So I think that there's consensus in the literature from an engineering and public safety perspective that you want to cap out at 15 percent. We'd be happy on the residential study group in our discussion so far to limit that to only a downward slope. Um, but then I think the question that we're kind of wrestling with is, is 15 enough? I mean, Lexington goes to 12 percent, other communities go to 10 percent. Do you want to have the least safe driveway slope grade? I mean, I'm, I'm glad that there'd be some limit at 15. We might want to consider going even beyond that for a safety reason. The second reason to regulate driveway slope is that it um, has an effect on discouraging the garage under design. And <coughs> the garage under design, particularly with a two-family house, is problematic because it eliminates the front yard. So instead of having a front yard and a traditional streetscape, you have a pit in front of the house. Some of these pits are so steep they have to have fences up on the sides so people don't fall in the driveway. It looks like a loading dock. The front yard is not usable for children to play. It's not any kind of usable space at all. It's just like a pit or a loading dock. And that's something that um, it, many people in town here, I think, are interested in limiting. Um, as an additional point on that, and Laura, this is new, when I, when I was looking at Belmont today, I saw that they both limit driveway slope and have some really excellent suggestions for uh, regulating the garage under design. So I have a section of the Belmont zoning code here for your information, and I'm going to bring this up at the residential study group when we meet next. I've already email Jenny about it um, and on the second page this is the first page here is just like the general information page but if you look I've highlighted parts on the second page and they for at B on the bottom residential um, for all residential driveways um, 
first they have a thing about parking in the front yard. That's one of the things we're considering if you will allow a space to be in the front yard, but in the driveway, not in the yard, but allowing a space in the driveway to be a space for the house. But then if you look at B2 in general residence districts, the following provision shall apply to attached garages, including those constructed below the ground floor and driveways and parking spaces that are created within a required front yard. And then if you look on the third page, this is really where the meat of it is. They allow a attached garage to for a, a single bay, a single g car garage opening um, with certain restrictions on paving, the maximum width not to exceed 12 feet, the slope no greater than 15%, drainage, um, effective use of plantings, grading, and location uh, are employed to minimize visual impacts. So these are all really good suggestions for a single family house. But then this B discusses two family houses and parking spaces for two car garage openings or larger below the ground floor shall not be permitted except by special permit. And that would really go a long way towards solving the problem. And the criteria for the special permit, I think, are something that we could really use here in Arlington. <coughs> um, one, feasible alternatives for providing necessary parking do not exist. Two, there's effective use of plantings, grading, and location uh, are employed to minimize visual impacts of the paved front yard and or garage, which is something that we're struggling with here. Three, and this is very important, the garage does not create the appearance of an additional story, which would then give an overall appearance of the structure exceeding the two and a half story limitation. And that is something that people really feel when you have the double garage in front of the house. The house has the impression of having an additional story because you have all this carved out space underneath. So I thought that was important. The slope is no greater than 15. Um, the paved area is only as wide as the garage and tapers where possible. Uh, six would probably have to be modified toward Arlington because it talks about a separation between the driveways and we only allow one driveway as of right. Um, seven is on-site drainage. So this is something that I'm going to bring up to the residential study group, but I wanted to just give you some information about it tonight. I just found it today. Um, but that would be a way of maybe regulating uh, garage unders and driveway slope altogether if we had kind of a similar bylaw and there does seem to be um, some consensus that regulation of driveway slope is a good idea we've been struggling with how to deal with the garage under aspect because as you know from your information here if you make the driveway slope 10 percent then you're going to have a very large front yard setback and that might be desir undesirable um, because the house is too far back from the road so this might be a way if you can have both of these provisions together limiting the slope and putting some special permit requirement on a, a two-family garage under, that might go uh, a way towards solving the problem. So um, ha happy to discuss anything else with you uh, about this. Um, we're still thinking of only one curb cut as of right, um, maybe possibly having tandem parking permitted. So if you have to have two spaces, you don't, in, for a single family house, Right now, the developer puts in a two-car garage at the front of the house, but if you allow them to just have one driveway space and one garage space uh, in front of it, that might uh, help solve some of the visual impacts that people in the communities are experiencing. Uh, do you have any questions about anything that I've said so far? Yeah, I want to point out sure. uh, there are some graphics in here that also mm -hmm. show you how adjusting the slope of the driveway yeah. will impact the size of the house that's buildable on the lot. And you can see there in each one, uh, the house really does change size. I just want to point that out to the other members of the board. If you push the house back on the lot, the house gets a little smaller, too. Right. Yeah. Right. So I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Board. Yeah. Um, thank you for doing the Belmont research. Um, how do Belmont, I, I should know this, but I don't spend a lot of time in Belmont. How do their lots compare to Arlington's lot sizes? I don't know. Um, I, mean, I they, tend to think they're bigger. I tend to think that they're bigger also. Um, so they can do some of these other things and, uh, <clears throat> to, to reduce that. Um, and I also wonder whether they have the same issue we have in town of um, these two 
side by side two families, well, which this is one of the problems we see. I mean, that's the majority of what we see. We, this, this is the discussion that's going yeah. back to last year. This would discourage that, though. Right. 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 So I just I just wonder whether Belmont is, is dealing with the same. Problem. I know. I don't know the answer. To yeah. that. I don't know if you do. Belmont has you know the larger, wealthier area, but mm -hmm. then they also have a more middle class area with a ton of two families. And there you see those two families stacked on small lots. Yes, yeah, they are. No garage. They right. Just have, and they deal or a with garage the on the apartment. side yard in the back because yeah. they're usually one on top of another. Right. I don't um, know if they have the same prevalence of tear downs to create the side by side with the mm -hmm. double garage, but they probably wouldn't because this if this bylaw has been is on the books. That just discourages that design because then yeah. I think a developer likes to know in advance what you can do by right rather than by a special permit. And so they would just design the house without the garage under, have the garage flat. I'm curious to see what their development looks like. Mm -hmm. if bring that when we meet. Laura, can week. you reach out to Belmont Planning Department and ask them about um, this issue? The lot sizes? Is that the. Uh, lot sizes, but also whether they're seeing the. The building of these side-by-side -side condos that kind of necessitate mm -hmm. this driveway to begin with, with the underneath space to the, mm -hmm. to the driveway. I mean, I'd like to know what what has the actual effect of um, of the, this very specific bylaw been. Mm -hmm. I mean, has it acted as more or less a complete bar to this kind of of configuration, or you know, has it functioned in, in a way that has allowed? some of these to be built when they were able to, to meet the, the criteria. Yeah. Well, I, I recently did, I was at a meeting where the um, Belmont planner was talking about some of their zoning changes, and I think they made a lot of changes to their zoning to make them more restrict, make it more restrictive and to have a um, review process for almost everything that gets built. Yeah. This is from 2005, so it has been there. A oh, while. This is when, oh, really? Yeah. This is from 2004? Yeah, it says. Yeah. Yeah. I can find out. I'll, I'll yeah, so there might be, the, there should be some history on, on mm -hmm. how this has worked in practice. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to see that just out of curiosity, see how it compares to, to Arlington. Yeah. Well, that's an idea. It's very easy to find the lot sizes. And have you seen how Winchester and Somerville? So I, these I, I know not everybody responded to them. Right, not, not everybody that. responded. And uh, I, I found that Cambridge, which I think is similar in lot size and density, more dense than, than Arlington, um, has a driveway slope not to exceed 7.5%. Although, curiously, that's not in their zoning bylaw. It's in their um, curb cut regulations. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I don't know what the reason for that is, but the limit is there. Uh, Somerville does not have anything. Um, Winchester does not have anything. Winchester has such big lots. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's, kind of I don't see the same kind of issue. Um, I couldn't find anything in Somerville, but I know they're in the process of totally redoing their, their ordinance right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something that they're looking at, but it, there's nothing currently on the books. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I, yeah. Thank you. Sure. We're scheduled to talk about this more next week. Great. Great. No, at our in, in two weeks. It, right, in two weeks. No, I, I, oh, they, there's some more questions, and I actually have something else that I wanted to, okay. to ask about, too. So, okay. Oh, I, I just wanted to come back to, to the percentage, because it, it did, when I read this, strike me that 15% uh, uh, that was very much at the at the upper end. Yeah. Um, and most of the communities were, were significantly below 15 percent mm -hmm. so um, you know keep thinking about that uh, in concert with what that what the percentage uh, would mean with respect to the setback right um, you know I'd like I'd like to see uh, the, the reasoning behind whatever recommendation the, the um, residential study group comes up with do you think that it should be le um like about uh, less, like twelve percent or fifteen percent. Well, are you I, saying? I don't have. I I'm not going to express a preference. Sure. But uh, you know, if if the recommendation is yes, we should go with fifteen percent, which mm -hmm. seems by consensus to be the maximum for yeah. safety. I'd like to understand why we're going to the maximum w rather than than something less, as most of these communities seem to have done. Yeah, um, I, I can just tell you that the uh, residential study group has so many diverse interests, um, it's hard to get everybody on the same 
page about everything because obviously this limits the size of the development and yeah. there are a lot of developers with interests. I mean, sure. I my preference would be to go to 10%, um, but I don't know if there's going to be uh, support for that. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that there is, but we'll have to we'll see how that goes. I can tell you a little bit of history with this discussions last year before town meeting, and I know you're a town meeting member, but you weren't at some of these hearings, is the issue is, is that lot sizes in Arlington vary so widely, and some are much smaller than others, as you decrease the percentage of slope there. So if you go from 15 to 10, then you're significantly shrinking the amount of house that can be built right. on any given lot, or the amount that can be added on. And perhaps what we look into is, is, in adding is that there's some sort of trade-off for height or width, but we haven't gotten that depth deeply yeah. into Can it. I yeah. make one, yeah. one comment? This is sort of getting almost to a point where it was sort of what was, it's a lot better, mm -hmm. but it's, last year was too, too encompassing, mm -hmm. okay? And this is sort of getting that way a little bit more. I think my recommendation is to decouple certain things. I would just say <coughs> for safety fa for safety factors only, mm -hmm. period, mm -hmm. driveways cannot be any more than, let's agree upon a, a, yeah. no, a number, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I do believe that 50% is pretty steep without a blend on the top and bottom for the cars that to transit, yeah. make that transition, they bottom up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that would just be a separate thing. Mm hmm And that stands alone. Mm hmm for all new construction, not, you know? Yeah, okay. yep. And then you start talking about tandem parking, mm -hmm. two curb cuts, mm -hmm. um, uh, parking in the back. Let's put that as a separate thing, because otherwise, if you start combining everything into, into it again, mm -hmm. it's gonna get to a very, um, everybody's gonna have a little tug of war at something else, everybody has a different interest. Okay. If you, and I don't think we're gonna start talking about that just yet. Mm -hmm. That's not what's been discussed in the, right. the residential study group. Right. I think mean, Linda's just here to update us today right. on what's happened there. Right. Um, and to kind of gauge the interest right. of the board and, on going forward. And one of the things is um, because this was acted upon unfavorably last year, it, it can't go forward unless you guys um, recommend it in your final report to the planning board. So that's under 40A section five. So you, mm -hmm. we would need your approval if we're gonna talk about a 15% slope. Because it was because defeated it, last year. It was defeated yeah. last year. That's the rule. So um, I had another question. It's not about driveway slope, but this is, um, uh, since we're here and talking about warrant articles, Lash. Can I pause you yes. For one yes. Did you have a question? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just. Um, I Name and address, please. This is not a public hearing, but I'm still going to yes. require it. Uh, well, it is a public hearing. Steve Rabelak, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Um, I, I, the research that you've been going through has, has been pretty interesting. And one, just I just had a question. Were there patterns um, between cities that allowed off-street parking versus those that did not? We didn't, I didn't look at off-street versus on-street parking mm -hmm. because I was focused about the safety issue mm -hmm. uh, okay. and um, and just what pitch was safe for pedestrians to okay. walk by. Yeah, I, would, I was thinking sorry. like in, in Somerville, because they allow off-street parking, the simplest way to sol solve a driveway slow problem is not to build a driveway. Right. So I was... Yeah, wondering how much that might have played into the Unfortunately, I don't see us getting rid of <laughs> oh, <laughs> parking <I have> requirements <laughs> anytime soon. What's right, it thank like? What does it like to? I'd like to second. Go ahead. I would like to second what Ken said about decoupling. I think that's sure. a really important thing. It's yep. a safety issue. Mm -hmm. I would tend toward 10% or 12%. Mm -hmm. And let's put that aside, just as Ken said. Yeah. Okay, now what, what are we talking about? Are we talking about how people park on their lots, whether they have below grade garages mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. I think that now you're talking about regulating house size, lot usage, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's very different from a safety issue. Yep. I think it would be useful to have a couple different prototypes in our in your little armory of exhibits. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with the Heights because I live in that area. Okay. The Heights has houses with a 20-foot front yard and a driveway on the side that right. leads to a garage or not. Mm -hmm. um, um, East Arlington has many two-family houses or other houses that are have 20-foot driveways in some cases, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah. 
And that's another prototype. I know there are six million different versions uh, outlying different varieties, but mm -hmm. there are three or four typical ways people actually houses park. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be good to have a little mm -hmm. diagram of each one or a picture. Yeah. And one of the things to consider. And then we have some kind of reference when we're all talking about what about this and what about that. Well, okay, yeah, there are quite a few houses that have the little slope driveways like the picture, so that should be one of your prototypes. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of make an evaluation of how serious that particular condition is that we're trying to remedy somehow versus maybe other things that are as important, like parking on the, on the front yard, mm -hmm. as an example. Right. Those are the evaluations I'd like to be able to make somehow, yeah. rather than trying to, again, kind of pigeonhole, pigeon, pigeonhole it into a regulation about slopes that somehow affects the, the design of the house or the size of the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work again, I don't think. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I have, I have another question, though, about Warren Arkles. As long as I'm up here, it's not about driveway slope, but um, since I'm here, I just take a moment. I'd mm -hmm. like to ask you about it. Um, last year, there was a suggestion to modify the large additions in residential districts by tweaking that to include not just uh, special permits for large additions and um, alterations over 750 square feet or that increase the um, uh, square footage by uh, more than 50% of the original building size. There was, there, was that art, there was that provision in the zoning by the large additions in residential districts to make it apply to reconstruction and replacement. But it also did a lot of other things too. It would have applied to um, putting a second story on a ranch and it would have sunlight and shade impacts. And I think it tried to do too much, that citizen article. And my question for you, is, and I, I have, um, if this is the language of large additions in residential districts with just uh, a suggested replacement of adding reconstruction or replacement, so it would require a special permit for tear down rebuilds. So I'm just show you, it's just one simple change in the language. And because the other measure was defeated last year, um, this, something like this couldn't go forward unless it was in the final recommendation of the, of the ARB. And I didn't know uh, how you all felt about this kind of thing. And I um, talked to Jenny about it, and she said, well, we in order for something like this to be considered, y you would have to be receptive to it as the planning agency. And I am here just to gauge your interest about whether you would be receptive to this kind of change. And if, if you say to me, um, yes, this is something we'd be sort of interested in looking at, then I can go back to the Residential Study Committee and say, it's, um, we could consider making this kind of recommendation if, if you would put it in your final report. Um, it's just so within the scope of what was defeated last year. Um, and my own experience is I think the one last year tried to do too much. This is an issue of parity because right now if you are um, putting on an alteration or in addition to your house, you need, and if it's above a certain size threshold, there's a review process, you, you need to get a special permit, um, the neighborhood is notified, there's opportunity for comment. But if somebody's going to tear down the house and rebuild it, even if the larger structure meets the same size thresholds, they can just do it uh, as of right without a special permit. And I didn't know how you felt about that. So I'm not comfortable having a discussion on this without it going through the residential study group. Right. I would want to do that. So um, until that, until we have that conversation there, I think it's premature okay. to bring it here. So let's talk about it at that meeting next right. week. I didn't want to bring it there <laughs> if you guys said it's a lost cause here. Let's see what that board says about it before they come up. Okay. The committee says before it comes up here. All right. Before the committee group. Okay. But, so, but we'll talk. We'll, we'll discuss everything. Okay. Good. Time All right. Thank you. Figured as long as I was here, I would ask. That's but fine. thanks very much for Thank your you. time. This All right. Thank, Thank okay. you. For coming. Laura, is there anything else that we can expect to come up? Have you heard from citizens oh, groups? Um, no, we haven't. Have you? No. no. Oh, there's so. the, um, it, well, the, the uh, good neighbor construction agreement might have some 
aspects. Yeah, we've talked. We've actually zoning. talked about that. It's not gonna, it's but I not zoning. think that's not okay. going to come under zoning. That's going. That that was what I referenced at the beginning of this yeah. session. I think that's going to end up with the selectmen and possibly the the whole thing. Board of Health. Okay. Everybody but us, okay. even though it's one of our subcommittees right. deciding on it. Mm -hmm. So, what it is is uh, it's essentially a construction agreement to be filed by the homeowner or the contractor who's developing some property, uh, and it ties in some of the bylaws to, to hold the person actually doing the construction a little bit more accountable than things that have been done. And it's actually in response to the Warren article that was filed at Fall Town meeting, which was filed in response to the Irving Street issue mm -hmm. from last year. And what this does is it tries to accomplish uh, a more fair and equitable uh, dialogue between homeowners and neighbors so that the construction process is a little bit more well managed people know what to expect and the people actually doing the work have some accountability so and it also directs people should hopefully direct people to the appropriate town authority and enforcement agency need be so um, have there has there been any discussion of making any needed minor technical corrections in the zoning bylaw uh, in in springtown meeting versus waiting for the zoning recodification process to 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 get through that well um i don't know if you've called the changes to the mixed use that we're talking about um technical changes other than that that nothing has come to us through us like the, with like the, the ceiling height being changed from seven foot no, 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 no. I, 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 I I'm, I'm thinking more, uh, uh, more things like uh, the uh, the mismatch in like the parking reduction section between the the title and and oh the R seven and yeah. R seven yes we we are looking at doing that also um, it was sort of an inadvertent inadvertently left out one of the zoning districts for um, yeah. That yeah. So that I'm right. talking yeah. about more that like just a tech, a, an error rather than a, an actual change. In the section that allowed reduction in the parking, we had all the multifamily um, districts named except for R7. We kind of we looked at it and it says multifamily housing on the top, and we've been interpreting that to include all multifamily zones. But we are thinking about that as a technical correction. I forgot to mention that earlier. All right. Anything else under that? No. 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 All right. Great. More to come, though. Thank you. Sure. Good. Thanks very much. Thanks, Liz. Good. Thank you. All right. <coughs> we are moving on to agenda item three, ACA MOU next steps. Um, I think they're working on a lease. Jenny and Mike aren't here to tell us about that. Um, what we've been asked to do is draft a support letter for my signature um, that we handed this evening to the Cultural Facilities Fund Grant Committee in support of the ACA's application. Uh, so what we have to do is vote on that tonight to authorize for uh, staff to finish that up and be assigned it later in the week to go in. Anyone to take a quick look at it? You can hear any changes? I had a, I had a question. The, the second paragraph uh, uh, saying that the board will provide necess any necessary support to ensure the, that the transition and tenure are successful. What, what are exactly are we committing to? Laura? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Um, you know, I think Jenny has, from the very start, worked with them very closely to meet, to help them to meet their goals, and I think that's all that we're committing to. I mean, we we will have a lease with them, and they will have to meet the the requirements within the lease, and I'm sure their lease will look a lot like all the other leases at the Central School. I think that are you are you on that committee at all? Or is it just my care? Just my care. Okay. So I, I think that um, they've already agreed to a rent because of the RFP. Through the RFP, their proposal was for, and I don't know what the number is, mm -hmm. um, but so that's not up for grabs at all.
Ja, ik denk. Is it important enough to more add a word there, advisory support, or is it? I think it's not. Yeah, I mean, only if you feel uncomfortable. Um, I, I, I don't. I, I don't think. I, yes, I don't think that we're committing very much. No, you're supporting to ensure that the transition. And da, 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 da. It's not. You know. We're not saying we're going to raise money for that. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, that's not no, we're not tying ourselves to anything, but it's kind of thinking. I'm fine with it. Um, yeah, it's a support letter for a grant. Yeah, we need a vote on it. So we do need a vote yeah. on it. Um, I move to. Uh, do I need to authorize you to? Do we need to authorize you to? You sign? need to authorize me to sign. I move to authorize the chairman of the ARB to sign this letter to the. Grant Committee members of the Cultural Facilities Grant Committee in support of the Arlington Center of the Arts. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. We're buying the sign tomorrow. Yeah. We didn't. Uh, the next item on the agenda, we are also going to move out two weeks um, to go over with Jenny the properties update that we wanted to have a discussion about for some time, but she's really in the best position to walk us through that. Okay. So next up is um, there's an email included in our packets this week by, <coughs> by a member of the, the town, only a neighbor of the Downing Square development who was uh, unhappy with our decision and some of the, she was unhappy with our decision and she wanted us to uh, reconsider our vote. As chair, having presided over three public hearings regarding this matter, I'm not inclined to reopen that hearing and to reconsider our decision. Uh, they also ask for a time extension to file an appeal. We are not able to do that either procedurally or under the statute. Uh, so I can't allow that to them. Uh, but I, I did want to at least acknowledge that this had, came, had come in uh, and, and state our position. I'm happy to discuss it amongst the rest of the members of the board. This Resident was invited to the meeting tonight. Uh, Jenny has had conversations with her, but I don't think they've gone any further than, than that. So, I think our <coughs> I think our process was fair and open. We allowed for public discussion, comment on several separate occasions. Uh, there was a dialogue between the board and. The proponent uh, and residents who wanted to come. Uh, as I said, it was over three separate hearings. Um, I'm comfortable with the decision that we made, and I'll leave it at that. So, is there anything we have to do here, or no? No. No. Okay. All right, and we do not have minutes for right. December 19th. Amy was sick last week, so she did not finish on time. I apologize and congratulate everybody for the brief <laughs> meeting this evening. That's okay. Uh, anybody <laughs> has any questions? I didn't want to cancel it outright with such short notice, but uh, sometimes that's the way things go. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.